Hello everyone, good evening. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. My name is Jill Cleese and I am the iSchool Career Center Liaison. And as your Career Center Liaison, I want you to know that I am available to you via email, phone, or video chat to work with you on your career-related questions. I can critique your resume, so you can always send me something via email and have your resume as an attachment. I'm happy to take a look at it. We can always set up mock interview sessions if you want to practice. We can do that online. We can do that on the phone. Or if you have, just have general interview questions, let me know. Basically, I'm here to help you with whatever you need that has a focus on your career and your job search. And I do recommend checking out the resources on the career development site first. Here's what the site looks like. And if you can't find what you're looking for here, then by all means, do contact me. How many of you are familiar with this site? You've either been here, kind of played around with it, you've seen it in the class. Let's do a show of hands, just so I get a sense of how many people are familiar with this. So it looks like about half of you are familiar with it. So it's right here off of the main home page, the iSchool's home page. You can see career development with the red circle is one of the tabs right at the top. When you open that up, in the green box are all the different sections that you will find. There's a lot of information here. Um, with the pink arrows, I want to point out the interviewing section, which we'll talk about in just a second, of course. And then the recordings to all of these types of workshops, the career development workshops, can be found in that section there with the other pink arrow that says career, webcasts, and e-newsletters. So that's where you will find all the recordings to the past workshops that I've done. This is the interviewing section. So if you were to open that section up, these are all the different sections you're going to find within there. And there's a lot. So I highly recommend that you spend some time checking this out, particularly before you have an interview coming up. So there's basic practice interview questions in there, behavioral questions. If you have a phone screen or you know it's going to be a video, like a Skype interview, there's information there. There's something here called Practice with Big Interview. That's actually an online mock interviewing tool. It's a really cool tool. It's widely underutilized, so I do try to point that out to people because it's an excellent resource. Uh, if you have questions about references, uh, questions to ask the employers in an interview, you can find all that good information in there. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that that was available and where to find it. All right. so. Out of curiosity, I'd like to find out when was the last time you all interviewed. So you can put in, I guess you could type in the chat box, I suppose, A, B, C, or D, and I can get a sense. So if it's been within the last 12 months, you're A. One to three years, you've been a B, C, and, and more than five years, which, whew, that's a long one. Ooh, someone had one yesterday. Very exciting. Can't wait to hear how that goes. Oh, so Catherine, it has been a while for you. All right. Um, lots of A's, a couple B's. All right, so mostly A's and B's. That's good news. Okay, but there's always going to be some great information we have to learn about interviewing. That's for darn sure. Okay, so I've taught many, many workshops, interviewing workshops online and in person. And in these workshops, I really go over the basics, right? How do you prepare for an interview? But you can all find that information on the career development pages. Oh, Catherine's got over 10 years since it's been since you interviewed. Holy smokes, girl, you're going to have lots of questions for me tonight, so bring them on. I'm excited about that. So past interview workshops, as I pointed out, can be found here on the career webcast sec uh, section. So you could always go back and check those out because I try to make each workshop a little bit different. So some of the basics are you can find some of the recordings. You can also find information on the career development pages that I pointed out to you earlier as well. But if interviewing, as the promotion goes for this workshop, still makes you weak in the knees, we're going to talk about developing a new strategy. So in addition to me going over some of the basics, I want to give you some background information to mentally prepare yourselves for your next interview. So Catherine, for you, for example, what we talk about tonight is going to be super helpful, but I would recommend going back and looking at some of the past interviewing workshops that I've done because those are going to be a little bit different and they will really dive deeper into the basics on how you prepare all the steps you needed to prepare for the interview. Okay. So here's my little secret to interviewing success. 
and I call it the psychology behind the interview. So before we jump into the nitty gritty of interview prep, let's take a step back. And I want to make sure that you are all mentally prepared for an interview, meaning your head's in the game, so to speak. So I really learned over the years that we can prepare, we can practice answering common interview questions, which of course is excellent. I'm not recommending that you don't do that. But here's the bigger piece to interviewing everyone. If you don't believe in yourself and you don't fully believe that you could do the job, you most often will not be successful in the interview because somehow that's always going to come across. But if you have the passion and the enthusiasm to do the job, if you have a positive attitude and you're willing to learn and you believe that you can do it, that will absolutely shine through just the same like lack of confidence will also shine through. So I've come up with four steps to help you get your head in the game and get you psyched so that you too can believe that you can do the job that you're interviewing for. So tonight we're going to back up a little bit and we're going to kind of talk about these behind the scenes. This, psycho this is what I call the psychology behind the interview because I want to make sure that you are prepared in your head, right? Like you're feeling like, all right, I can do this. I've got this. That's what I want to talk about tonight. So this workshop is being recorded. I want you to ask me questions. Feel free to type them in the chat box as we go along throughout. Just put them in there. Let's have an open dialogue. I love it when my workshops are open and informal. So please do ask me questions. All right, so here we go. So step number one is I want you to think that you, and, and no, this is true, you are being interviewed for a reason. You've got to remind yourself that not every person who applied for the position is being interviewed, right? You've got to think about that. Not every single person. And sometimes for one job, they could get 100, they could get 250, they could even get more than that applicants for positions. So for you to get an interview is good, right? I want you to be proud of yourself for getting the interview. So remind yourself that not every person who applied is getting an interview. And sometimes, as I said, you're going to beat out hundreds of other applicants for that same opportunity. That means there's something special and intriguing about you. The employer is clearly impressed with something on your resume or they would not be wasting their time talking to you. So most people I work with, most students that I work with, don't embrace this. I find that students will go into the interview already kind of feeling like an underdog, like somehow they don't deserve to be interviewed because they don't have all of the qualifications. Here's the psychology behind that and hear this. If an employer did not see something of interest on your resume, you would not be getting an interview. Straight up. They are talking to you just to be nice. So you want to go in there feeling empowered. You are among a select few. So you've got to be confident in your capabilities when you walk in there. So right off the bat, you have an interview, there's something special about you right there. Number two. I want you to think and remember and know that the interviewer wants you to be successful. Believe it or not, the recruiter, the hiring manager, the selection committee, whoever it is, they are just as hopeful as you are when you walk in the door for an interview that you are the one. It would make their job so much easier if they could quickly fill their position with the right candidate and then just move on. Because it takes a lot of time to, ser to serve on a search committee. Have any of you actually, have you been on a search committee in prior jobs? Part of your role was to interview people? So, so to do an interview panel, it takes a heck of a lot of time. So you, when, and then if you've been on the interviewing panels or you've been on the committee, you want to put yourself in those shoes, right? And think about what that experience was like. And then you can use that to your benefit when you're interviewing as well. <laughs> it's exhausting. It is exhausting. An interview panel, Rebecca, is when a panel of people, so that means more than one, are interviewing a person or, or interviewing the candidate. So a panel could be, you know, three to five people. They're sitting on the panel. One person comes in for an interview, and each person on the panel has one or two questions that they're asking that person. They're all writing down notes, and then once the person leaves and they're going to kind of sit down and go over what they thought about you as a candidate. But whether you're on a panel, you're part of the committee, 
you're doing this by yourself. It is exhausting. It takes a lot of time. So think about it. The interviewer wants you to be successful. They would love it if you just walked in and you were the one and they could go, yes, we found our person. We can wrap this up. So I want you to psych yourself up. And I want you to walk in there and wow them. But the only way you're going to do that is if you've got your head in the right place and you are confident and you know you can do this job. Like you walk in there and you know you've got it. So I had a recent grad tell me about an interview that she just went on. And she said she thought she did great and she was super excited about the position. But then she says to me, I'm not going to get my hopes up because they told me they were interviewing a lot of people and I don't know if I can do this job. So I'm thinking to myself, if that's her thought, I can bet you that there was an inkling of that lack of confidence that came through in the interview. If she's feeling like that already, right? Mm, yeah, there's a bunch of people, probably not going to get it. I bet she wasn't as confident as she could have been. So unfortunately, that's what happens to us. So my talk tonight is to really kind of get you thinking differently so that how you can truly be confident and walk in there and just do your very best knowing, yeah, I got this. And whatever you do, it's going to be your ultimate best for that particular position. So I do want to point out, though, that the flip side of this coin here is that even though believing in yourself is a big part of this process, it does come with practice. And I'm I know that, and I'm saying that right out there. So we have all blown interviews in our careers. I have blown many interviews in my career, which is how I learn things, right? And unfortunately, you all are going to have that same experience. But the key is to learn from each one and get better and better and start to really understand yourselves and your strengths and how to talk about them in a confident way. That's the key to being successful in an interview. You guys have any questions so far? Really, if you do, just type them in. I'm checking. I'll get to it. Here's one. This is from Lauren. Uh, she does say, interview panels are incredibly intimidating. I'm much better at talking with people one-on-one. -on -one. I believe in myself, but I get intimidated by interview panels and groups of people. So I'm glad that you brought that up, Lauren. So the good news is that you feel like you do a really good job talking with people one-on-one. -on -one. So here's what I would recommend, honestly. If you have a panel interview, you're going to walk in. You're going to look each person in the eye. You're going to shake hands with people. And you're going to sit down. And you're going to have your interview. And you're going to focus on people. Even though you have your eye contact and you're looking at different people in the, on that panel, I want you to get in your head that this is one-on-one. -on -one. I'm talking to this person, and then I change my eye contact. I'm talking to this person. You've got to psych yourself out. You really have to go, OK, I can do this if I focus on one person at a time, and I just deal with what this one person, and I'll switch my eye contact, rather than really psych going in your head, oh my gosh, there's all these people, and I'm going to freak out. It's going to have to be a lot of self-talk for you to get yourself through it, but you can do it. And the more you do it, the better you will get, because interviewing is absolutely a skill, but it's something you're going to have to do a lot of self-talk to keep yourself pumped up to get to that situation. Amanda's asking, what's the difference between a panel and a committee? There really isn't much of a difference. It's really kind of the same thing. It comes down to a group of people. Um, the interviewing committee might be the whole group that's interviewing people, but it's still considered a panel when the interviewee walks into the room. I hope that makes sense. So again, keep the questions coming. Uh, Lizette, you mentioned that interviewers want you to be successful. What if you walk in and you're getting vibes from someone who doesn't seem happy to be there? That is a great question. So what, here's a couple things that I'm thinking about. One is you're going to have to start to evaluate throughout that interview, is it that person that is not happy about being in the interview, or are you getting a sense from others that that person is not happy within that organization or that job. That's one of the things, if we think about, again, big picture about interviews, interviews are really a two-way street. They are interviewing us, absolutely. But on some level, you really are also interviewing them because you need to find out for yourself if this position, if this organization, if this company, if this group of people, if they're going to be a good fit for you and if you're going to be happy being there. So part of noticing the personalities of people, how people interact with each other or don't interact with each other, how happy people look or how are not happy people look, 
um, is a big part of that observation process to see if seem, that seems like a place that you're going to want to be. So I think it's good to pick up on some of those vibes like that. And sometimes you have to listen to those vibes. Um, there was an interview I was on oh, probably about, actually about a year ago. Um, and during the interview, I got that same kind of vibe. Like there was something inside that told me, I don't think I really want this job. And I can remember at a specific point in the interview of kind of purposely blowing it. Um, because I felt that vibe and something tells, told me mm, that wasn't it and, you know, and, and I didn't get it and I was slightly disappointed but I realized, you know, that really wasn't the right place for me. So then it was okay. So I hope that answers your question. Um, Lauren says, I think not taking it personally helps too. They may be sending bad vibes from something else entirely. Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. So it's where you have to kind of evaluate it. And just and get a feel. Is it just that one person? Is it the whole group? Is there something else going on here? Rebecca says, as a person with a verbal stammer, what should I do if I'm asked a question that causes me to stammer because I cannot answer it immediately? So I think there's a couple different strategies, Rebecca. Um, one is, let me, I'm looking at your question again one more time. So. Is a verbal, so are you saying a verbal stammer is like a stutter and that's something that you can't control? So if that's true, you just answer the question just who you are and is the best that you are because that's what you would be bringing to this workplace, right? So they need to be able to deal with that and accept the person that who you are. You also have the option of just, just calling it out and saying, I do have a stammer. Um, that may come out sometime throughout this interview. Just wanted to let you know, I might need a little extra time in terms of a minute or so to answer the question. You could be very honest and upfront and just say something like that as well. The other thing that I'm wondering is if it is more like a stutter of something you can't control or if it's just something that you do when you're nervous, then you're going to want to work on practicing as much as you can through an interview so that you are as confident as you can so that you won't be as nervous, which then would cause the verbal stammer, if that makes sense. So it's kind of putting a strategy into to place to help you deal with that. So you have to find what's right for you. If that's something that you want to talk a little bit more about one-on-one, uh, -on -one, we can certainly do that offline. I'm very happy to talk with you about that. Okay. Good questions, everybody. All right. I am moving on to number three, step number three. So number three is first impressions in an interview. When you walk in, you know, they open the door, they see you, you reach out, shake hands, make eye contact, smile. Those first impressions are made within the first 90 seconds. So what that means then is everything from how you carry yourself to what you're wearing to what you say and even more importantly how you say it is all being taken into consideration. So based on this first impression, many interviewers have already made a hiring decision and they spend the rest of the interview collecting data in essence to prove to themselves that yes, they want you or no, you didn't make the cut. So on some level they have kind of um, gotten an impression in that first 90 seconds and now they're really trying to figure out if the impression that they got when you first walked in um, works for them, makes sense, right? So you want to do yourself a favor and ensure that you have kind of all the basics covered, meaning you're dressed appropriately, you shake hands appropriately, you do smile because that goes a really long way and you know what you're going to say. You've practiced, uh, you've rehearsed, and again, you're as confident as you can be. We're all nervous in interviews. I get nervous in interviews. But you have to learn to deal with that nervousness and use it in a positive way. I want to see what Lauren said here in the chat box. Yeah, that's great, Lauren. I love that. I, pr I like the honest approach as well. Sometimes people aren't as comfortable with that, but if um, if it's, it was Rebecca, yes. But if Rebecca's, if you're good with that, 
I absolutely think that's a nice thing to do. I think that does take the pressure off. Um, and somehow it seems to make everybody in the room a little more comfortable. But again, that's going to be your personal call. OK. So we have all heard that nonverbal communication is the single most powerful form of communication. And that is particularly true when it comes to interviewing and making a first impression. So the percentages I have here, this is based on some research by a professor at UCLA. But a study revealed that verbal communication takes into account only 7% of our overall communication, which is crazy. And the remaining 93% is coming from nonverbal communication. So those are going to be 55% is going to be our body language, 38% is our tone of voice. So practicing, practicing with other people, using Big Interview, that online mock interviewing tool, that records you. It records your voice so you can hear how you sound. What's the tone? Are you too loud? Are you too quiet? Do you have too many ums, too many ahs? Do you, do you stammer? Do you hesitate? Do you ramble? Those are things that you want to check for yourself. And body language. Um, it's about connecting your mind and your body, even though you're nervous and being aware of, am I wiggling in my chair? Am I playing with my hair? Did I find a piece of the, the corner of a paper or a pen and I'm wiggling it around? You've got to tune in to see what your body does when you're nervous in an, in an interview situation. And then honestly, just make yourself stop. If you know you're a big hand talker and that you're going to grab hold of things that are in front of you and play with it, then you want to make sure you don't have things in front of you. And you might even tuck your hands, your fingers, right underneath your legs so you're kind of sitting on them just to hold the hands down. Nobody can see that because the table's there. But you've got to find some strategies that are going to work for you so that your nervous habits don't become distracting. So hopefully that makes sense for people. But again, the key here is to practice a lot and just to start to understand how you come across to others and what type of impression you leave. Does anybody have any questions? So Dorothy, do you have a strategy for rambling? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so rambling, to your strategy there, again, is to prepare. So that means practicing with common interview questions practicing out loud. So there's a difference between practicing in our head and practicing out loud. So when you have some common interview questions, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, and you maybe you write out your answers or maybe you type out your answers, I want you to then practice talking out loud and record yourself. You can use your phones. Um, I do a lot of recording in preparation when I'm driving in the car, because you can just kind of hit the record button and then just talk. But you want to know what you're going to say and know what the point is of what you're going to say so you don't just go on and on and on and on. Ramblers also need to be comfortable with silence. So if you, what you want to say what you want to say and then stop talking. And if there's silence, it's OK. So a couple strategies. When you've said what you, you think you've answered the question, and then you stop talking, and then it's quiet, and now you start to feel uncomfortable with that quietness, you can always say, did I answer your question? Or um, are you looking for, some, for a little bit more? I mean, if you, you could say something like that if you really felt compelled. A lot of times the silence is there because the interviewer is writing notes, right? They're writing down what you said. And they're still writing, and you've stopped talking, and they're still trying to finish their thought. And that's usually that uncomfortable silence. So it's OK just to let that silence be. So the main thing for ramblers, be OK with silence and be very clear on what it is that you want to say, and then stop talking. Dorothy says, it's always my toughest issue when I'm asked, tell me about yourself. Yes, so we are absolutely going to hit that question. So I'm going to push that one off if you're OK, just for a little bit. And then I'm going to come back to it, because I definitely want to talk about that. Because that is a tough question, and that's where people tend to ramble, because they don't know what they're going to say. Um, but it's one of those questions that I absolutely want you to know what you're going to say before you walk into the interview. All right, here we go. Step number four to my psychology behind the interview is the interviewer is not trying to stress you out. Believe it or not, people, it's not a game 
They're not typically or purposely trying to make you uncomfortable and stress you out. It's not a trick. Uh, the interview is not designed to cause you a great deal of discomfort beyond the normal interview jitters. Remember, put it all in perspective. Remember, the interviewer wants you to be successful. Their main goal in the interview is to get to know you. And they need to ensure that you are the right candidate and you can handle the job. Because they don't want to rehire for this position anytime soon. It's expensive to hire people and then have to let them go and hire somebody else. It's super time consuming. They don't want to deal with that. They just want to get the right person in, get this person up to speed, and get back to life. So you want to be sure, again, to practice for your interviews a lot. I don't feel like you can ever over prepare for an interview. So you've got to practice positive self-talk and tell yourself, you've got this. You want to walk in there and nail it and just do your best. And remember, they are not purposely trying to stress you out. So there's a huge benefit to taking some much needed mental preparation time before the interview to get in your head, get in the right place, and they can make a big difference in how you present yourself to a potential employer. So before you have your next interview, before you just jump right into, OK, let me look at common interview questions and start practicing that, take a little bit of this reflection time and think about these four steps that we talked about and really get your head in the right place so you're like, yeah, I've got this interview. I probably beat out a whole bunch of people because this is a super cool job. I'm really excited that I got the interview. I'm going to do my very best. Whatever happens, happens. But I'm going to prepare as much as I can. You know, talk yourself through it and think, yeah, I've got this. All right, any other questions? All right, just keep them coming if you have them. So <clears throat> here we go. I want you to get psyched about your next interview. I want you to be excited about it. Employers want to hire positive, enthusiastic individuals. And they typically have a pretty solid pool of candidates to choose from. So you want to make sure that your energy and your interest in the position and the company overall totally comes across. So positive self-talk, as I've said, goes a long way. And sorry this is blurry. And hopefully, this is totally not dating myself. Does anybody, how about this? Does anybody know who this guy is? OK, first we've got it. First we have a serious question before we get into this funny guy. So Rebecca. OK, so Rebecca, you've got more of a, of a serious issue and question. So there's a couple things here. Again, first of all, you don't have to disclose your, the actual diagnosis in the interview. Um, that could be, and this is again your choice, but I'd probably wait if, it, if you feel comfortable to the time where they've hired you. But the stammer, if it's coming across in the interview as, was it Lauren, I think, that said it? Yeah. Um, you, you might honestly just want to say in the beginning of the interview that you do have a stammer. Uh, they might notice it when you're, when you're answering the interview questions and that you'd appreciate them just being patient with you. And people will be like, OK, I get that. And that's not going to be a problem. So then you go through the whole process, um, the whole interview. If they, when they hire, I'm not going to say if they hire you, I'm going to say when they hire you. Um, at that point, that's when, again, if you want to, because only because you need an accommodation, you can disclose what the disorder is. If you don't need an accommodation, then you actually still don't even need to disclose it. Um, the biggest fear about the productivity, that's something kind of separate from the interview. Because first, you've got to get the job, right? So they're two separate things. So maybe what you and I could do, if you want to chat with me about it, is we could talk offline about what the fear is, a little bit more of that. But the, the bigger piece is just getting through the interview so that you get the job. And I hope that makes sense. So Tiffany knows who this is. And Eileen knows. Keith knows. Lizette knows. Yay. I just think this is the funniest thing, and I've thought about this guy for years when I think about interviewing preparation, and I think about positive self-talk, right? I think it's perfect. You just say to yourself, look in the mirror, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I think it works every time. So this is my woo-hoo for positive self-talk. 
but it's going to work. Just tell yourself that. All right, Dorothy, quick share on subject of interviewers, not trying to make you nervous. Set an egg timer at the beginning of the interview. <laughs> So you know what I would say, Dorothy? That tell, would tell me so much about who that person is. I mean, I'm sure they set the egg timer not to make you nervous, but to keep themselves on track in the interview. So that would lead me to believe that that person probably has some pretty bad time management skills. <laughs> and I would have to wonder, do I really want to work for that person? <laughs> uh, Yes, that's correct. They can't ask you, Lauren's asked mentioning that, um, that they can't ask about health conditions. No, they absolutely can't. That's where it comes down to you as the employee uh, disclosing if and when you're comfortable or if you need the accommodation. Al Franken, that's right. <laughs> he did go on to become a senator. I did not know that. That's amazing. See, that's how much positive self-talk he had. He knew he was good enough and he was smart enough to leave SNL and become a senator. There you go, people. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, moving on. So my final tip on getting you psyched for an interview is to think of these three things. So throughout the entire interview, the interviewer is trying to determine, can you do the job? Will you do the job? And are you a good fit? And honestly, if you can demonstrate these three things, your chances are really strong in landing the job. So breaking it down, can you do the job? This is really looking at basically, do you have the qualifications and the experience? And pretty much, of course, you do, or you would not have been invited for an interview, right? If they didn't think that you could do the job, you would not be sitting in that chair. So once you get the interview, now it's your job to convince them, let's say, um, and tell them more about how you have the right skills and how you can do the job to meet their needs. I hope that makes sense. Um, but it's really about you being able to articulate and demonstrate clearly and succinctly through your examples of your past work how you have the skills to do that work. So I'm going to say a word of caution here, too. Do not make assumptions that the interviewer is going to figure out what you mean or will read between the lines of what you say. You need to be absolutely specific. So that means coming up ahead of time before the interview in part of your preparation, thinking of specific examples of things that you've done in your past that demonstrate the skills that are needed to do the job that you're interviewing for. And you want to have those all fresh in your mind so that you can just, boom, you can talk about them. And out they come. So that's part of demonstrating you can do the job. Number two, will you do the job? So this comes down to, are you demonstrating excitement, motivation, passion, enthusiasm, a sincere interest in this position and in this organization? You must exude a positive attitude. And smiling once in a while helps. Some people are pretty good at it. Others, when I practice interviewing, they become this whoop, complete serious person. And I'm like, hello, where are you? You got to be human in there. You want your personality to come across, right? They're trying to figure out who you are. So make sure that you, the person, starts to come out so they can get a sense of that. If not, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. All right, that's will you do the job. And then number three, are you a good fit? Now, this is kind of a tough one. To, you can't really fake this one because you are who you are. So there's not too much we can all do about that, right? Um, but if somehow you were to fake this and you got hired, it might feel like you're a square being shoved into a circle. Meaning it might not feel right. So I really want you to do your best here. I want you to demonstrate what you can do. Show them how you're a team player, how you have a collaborative work style, be positive, ask well thought out intentional questions, and try to really just be who you are. Um, and we got to go with that that's going to be, that's going to be enough. And we got to see if that fits with what they're looking for. I'll tell you, this number three, this is one of those things that comes up the most often of why people didn't get a job. They might have had all the right skills and 
they were enthusiastic, but it came down to they just weren't going to be the right fit for the team. And again, there's not too much that you can do about that. It's unfortunate. It's a bummer when it happens, but it does happen. You can't beat yourself up over it, you know? You are who you are. We are who we are. And um, you pick yourself up and you go again. But these are th critical things. But I want you to go in there showing you can do it, you will do it, and hey, here's who I am. And overall, interviewing is a skill, just like riding a bike. So the more you do it, the better that you're going to get. So there's a lot of mental preparation that goes into an interview. There's a lot of this you know, psychology behind the interview to get yourself and your head in the right place. Does anybody have any questions um, at this point before we jump into some of the nitty gritty of interviewing? All right, doesn't look like anybody, so we got, no, doesn't look like anybody's typing. All right, I'm going to keep going. Um, let me ask you all a question, though. How many of you have actually, you can just do a show of hands or raise a hand, how many of you have actually gone to an interview not fully prepared because you just thought you could wing it? You know, like, oh, I have an interview, and I'm maybe going to look over a few things, but I'm not really going to prepare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, close to half. So, uh, so how'd that work for you? Out of curiosity. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> right? Ooh, guess you got to find epic fail. Yeah. I think we've all had those experiences. Horrible strategy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, this is always it, right? I thought I could wing it because I wasn't really that into it, but I blew it. Terrible. I was completely unprepared. Yeah. So. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, those are our those are our worst case scenarios, right? When we all think, yeah, I got this. I could just sort of go in there and wing it. And it is, it's horrible. And we walk out feeling horrible. But lessons learned. So you know from those experiences that you've got to prepare and you've got to do everything possible so that you can just walk in there and try to nail it. I wasn't even prepared for the why do you want to work here question. <laughs> That's really classic, Dorothy. <laughs> Oh, it's funny. Keith, I actually thought it was a casual sit down based on the email conversation. I've heard that one many times as well. Um, the communication somehow doesn't come across to us that this is like a serious interview, um, so we're not prepared. So that goes to show that anytime you're having an interaction with someone who is in a position to hire you, whether it's an informational interview where you think it's very casual and I'm just going there to get information, be prepared because you never know when things are going to twist and flip on you and it becomes an actual interview and you still want to always put your best foot forward. Rebecca says, uh, <laughs> Rebecca says, my worst interview, but I learned a lot. I bet my disaster of an interview is a funny story told by employees. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was even trying to be employed by a shoe store when I knew nothing about shoes. Yeah, I love it. I think Barnes & Noble would have been a better option. That is, that's great. That is really great. All right, so let's talk about some of these common interview questions and how you might approach the answers to them. So these are the three questions, and you relate. You guys are so funny. I love the honesty, by the way. Thank you. These are the three questions that I work with everyone on when we're preparing for interviews. I want to make sure that I do this for myself as well, that I have my answers to these three questions absolutely just like rolling off my tongue. I know exactly what I'm going to say. So these are the three that we're going to focus on as well. Um, there are more common interview questions on the interviewing section of the career development site. You can get a whole list of them there. You can do a Google search and get a whole list. You could even Google or do an inter internet, I should say, instead of Google. Um, you could do an internet search on interview questions for and put in the type, whether it's a public library or academic library, or the specific place. Because people are really good about posting this stuff, and you can find a lot of good questions to practice with just by doing that search. And someone has probably shared what those questions are going to be with you. So it gives you a good idea what to use. All right, tell me about yourself. <laughs> I feel like this question, and you may get it or you may not get it. Um, you might get something like it if they don't start out with that exact question, or even the preparation from 
this will come out somewhere else in the interview, so it's still very worthwhile coming up with your answer. But if you do get this, how many of you get this as your first question, by the way, in an interview? I still tend to get this. So about, what, five, six of you. Okay. The other question that I find employers are going to lead with, either this one or they'll jump right into, why do you want to work here? Those are the ones that I've found. Um, but the tell me about yourself. You know, if you aren't prepared and you stumble right off the bat with this question, it sets the tone for your entire interview. So you absolutely want to have it nailed. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to talk about, you know, here's my name, here's where I came from, here's my major in college, and here's a summary of what I've done, right? They know all of those things. They've got that. That is a waste of your time right there. So what they do want to know about, though, is how your experience is a great fit for the job that they have. So here's a strategy. You might perhaps highlight your years of related experience. Maybe you point out a couple, oops, that's not what I'm looking for. Maybe you point out a couple related accomplishments, and you wrap up with why you're interested in the particular job or how you're a good fit and how your past experience has brought you to this point in time interviewing for this particular position. So here is an example. This is long, but you actually could say this in an interview. So I've worked in the academic setting for over seven years, first as a substitute teacher, then as a technology specialist, and then as an academic librarian, all while completing my MLIS. Most recently, I created an innovative online instructional program to encourage students to complete assignments on their own after the school library had closed. I was also successful in creating and maintaining a blog database that summarizes and evaluates library materials for young adults that's highly used by students and faculty. Now that I've completed my degree, I'm really interested in an opportunity to apply my technical and instructional skills in a university setting. Boom. Or bam, I should say. <laughs> so is this my strategy? Yeah, so here's, OK. Does anybody writing this down or need this or taking a picture or something? You guys good if I change? All right, moving on. So basically, here was the strategy, or here's my formula. And this is just my formula. It doesn't mean that you need to use this. But summarizing years of experience um, or related experience, summarizing the type of experience you've had, maybe you identify a couple key related accomplishments, or really think about something you're particularly proud of. This is all just one way. It's not an absolute. But I have found through my experience that this works pretty well to give people kind of a loose framework to work with. So you play around with it. Scream, do you want me to go back? Let's see. You guys are saying. Lizette, do you want me to go back to this one for a sec? OK, there you go. And then I'll move forward. I'll read Lauren's comment. She did, had to do a weird five-minute initial interview that asked these types of questions, but we couldn't go over five minutes. How do you keep it short and yet effective? Well, honestly, to say this answer is probably 30 seconds. No joke. So even if you had five minutes, you can actually get a lot of information out in five minutes. But the, the idea to keep it short yet effective is to know what are the key points of what you want to say and be very concise and you just say that. That goes back to not rambling. So if you kind of know what your key points are, you hit the key points and you stop talking and you move on. Like this answer, for example, it is, of course it's written out, but it's very succinct and it really would only take about 30 seconds to say this. Uh, yes, thank you, Laura. You can say the entire white whiteboard in a PDF. I'm never very good at that. OK, so here's my formula again, if you guys want to capture this. And this is, this is, like I said, this is no hard and fast rule. This is just something that I found that actually works really well when I'm working with students. Because I'll start to ask them questions to pull the stuff out. So I might say, you know, we might look at a resume and identify, OK, how many years of experience do they have that relates? OK, we've got a number. 
or I might go, you know, I might dig a little deeper. So, you know, well, what made you want to get your MLS? What was about that? Oh, that's an interesting story. Okay, tell me a little bit more about that. So I start pulling out pieces of information as I'm talking to students, and then we are able to put together the answer to tell me about yourself. And it's all related to kind of here's what I've done. Here's what brought me to this point in time, sitting in front of you, interviewing for this particular position. And when you can pull that together like that in your head, it makes a very powerful statement right off the bat. And it's like you can almost feel that you've pulled the interviewer in because you got them with a really solid answer. But it takes practice. It's not going to come to you in the interview. You've got to put this together before, and you rehearse it, and you go over it, and you practice it so that it just rolls right off your tongue. All right, next question. I'm keeping an eye on our time here. So why do you want to work here? Or you know, what attracted you to this job position? So things you want to consider. It's really, and again, if I was sitting here talking with you, I'd say, well, what made you apply for this particular position? What did you see about this job that made you go, oh, yeah, I think I could do that? That's what you want to focus on. So then once you focus on that, now you have to be able to articulate that to the interviewer in, in, this, in the interview situation. You know, what do you, what do you like about the job? Is it the setting where it's located, like a university setting? Um, it, um, if it's a public library and you really enjoy working with diverse people and helping your community and being part of your community? Um, is it the skills that you get to use, the variety that's involved, the challenge, the fact that you're doing something different every single day, the fact that it allows you to apply some of the skills that you have been developing and learning in your MLIS program and you absolutely loved your class on um, uh, digital archives and, you know, I, I had no idea that that was going to be an interest area of mine until I took this one class and I was absolutely fascinated by it. And then I started to take more classes in my program and now I'm so excited to be able to interview or to get a job where I get to use those skills, you know, something like that, right? So it's really sitting there digging in a little bit deeper. Why am I interested in this job? What about it specifically? That's the kind of stuff that an employer is going to be like, yeah, you understand my job. They're, they're going to be excited about that. Uh, let's see, Dee has a question. I have a second round panel interview in a few days and have no idea how to prepare. Seems like the first interview already covered everything. Concerned questions will be difficult and involved. Any ideas of what types of questions I should prepare for? OK, so if your first round was some of the basic questions, right? The second round, again, it's a panel. So what that means by doing a panel is they want more people to uh, hear from you and meet you and find out. Again, it's coming down to fit. They want to find, wow, I wonder if you guys are uh, at the same, interviewing for the same job. Hmm, interesting. But another round that's a, that fits a panel with more people, they want more people to meet you and find out who you are because they're really trying to find out fit. So what I would try to do, Dee and Lori, is I would try to find out, if I can, ahead of time, who are the people that are going to be on the panel? So the question is, who will I be interviewing with when I come back next Tuesday? And then you do a little research on those people. What's their job title? How long have they worked there? Um, what kind of role do they have? So you think about some questions that you're going to even ask in the interview, and you're going to find out from those people. Um, how might this position that I'm interviewing for um, connect or relate to your position? How might we work together? Wow, I noticed that you've worked here for like 20 years. Uh, what's kept you here so long? What do you like best about working here? So you're going to come up with some questions that you can ask all of them. And then you're going to go through, again, some of the basics, depending on what the job is that you're applying for. If the position has a large technical aspect, um, they might be getting now down to some more nitty gritty, like digging in a little bit deeper on um, how you handle certain situations and things that you could do. So I want you to again look at the job description, because now we're talking in general terms because so I don't know what the jobs are, but look at the job description, really carefully dig in and figure out, okay, what the job is, what are the skills they're looking for. Okay, and you think in the first interview, maybe they ask me the general questions. Okay, the second interview, they might be digging in deeper. So I'm going to have to come up with some really specific examples that are going to be able to demonstrate, you know, this skill, this skill, this skill, and this skill. That's how I'd start breaking it down, just in a nutshell. Will, how would you go about finding information on your next interviewers? I use LinkedIn. You're welcome. I use LinkedIn. 
Um, I look people up. I check out kind of their backgrounds. I don't be creepy about doing that based on the questions I ask them. You don't want them to feel creeped out by the research you did. But I think it's perfectly going to say, oh, yeah, really great to meet you. Um, I looked at your LinkedIn profile before coming in today, and I noticed that, wow, you've worked here for you know 15 years. That's really incredible and really interesting the different positions you've done. So what do you like best about being here? You know, What's kept you here so long or something like that? But that's the best source that I use. You yeah, still LinkedIn. Glassdoor, you can do a little bit of research on companies, not typically on people, but I use LinkedIn for people. Lauren, can we go over one question that always catches me off guard? What's your biggest weakness? Yes, we can, because you always get asked that, and so I actually have that prepared here, and I will speed along and get to it, because I someone always asks me that. All right, so here's an answer that you might use with the, um, why are you interested? I love the energy of working on a college campus. It's inspiring, and I enjoy being challenged with students' reference questions. I also enjoy the diversity of the patrons and knowing that I'm helping people and providing a service. While in graduate school, I developed an aptitude and a strong interest in social media, and I'm fascinated at how it can connect people together across the world with information, and I really want to be a part of that. Boom, what's that going to take? Ten seconds to say that? But it's right on, super concise, specifically related to the position that I'd be interviewed for. Yes, got it. All right, next. So why should we hire you? Or it's going to be something around, you know, what are the strengths that relate, what strengths do you have that relate to this position? It's basically a strengths question. However they're going to word it, it comes down to your strengths. So you have got to be able to connect your experience, your skills, and your interests and know what your strengths are. So here's some other additional questions that might they might ask you. Another way to word it, what would you bring to this position? What makes you the best candidate? They might even say, what are your strengths? What are your top five strengths? What are your top three strengths? When they ask you that, you want to have the best ones. Boom, boom, boom. They come right off. You know exactly what they are. So here's how you could answer it. Two different answers, two different examples. I'm really excited to be interviewing for this position. I have the experience and the enthusiasm to excel. I have over two years of experience working in a public library setting. I was able to rotate, gain experience and reference to children's library, and do community outreach. Nice. Or in my MLS program, I had the opportunity to very successfully work as a student assistant, providing technical support for our virtual colloquia sessions. I'm comfortable working with people in person not online. I have strong communication skills and collaboration skills as evidenced by the partnerships I've been able to make. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to directly apply my strengths and interests to this position. Boom. Pow. <laughs> I should say. All right. Are we good? Moving on. Here's the dreaded weakness question, because I always get asked about this. Um, let me say, how many people have been asked this question? Mm. Lots. All right, half of you. It's a kooky question, frankly. Um, but it does happen, obviously. At least half of you have gotten this question before. So overall, you do not want to unload a real weakness that you just kind of blip, plop on the table and you stun the interviewer and leave them with a red flag in their mind. That would be a gigantic no-no. People do it and they don't get the job. So you want to answer with something that you can turn into a positive or you can describe how you have made this so-called weakness work for you. I don't want you to spend a lot of time here when you're answering the question in an interview. You just answer it straight up, concise, to the point, stop talking, and move on. There is no reason to linger with this particular question. You absolutely do not want to say you're a perfectionist. Um, it's not believable. It's pretty cliche. And that's the last answer that an employer wants to hear. So cross, cross that one off your list. Uh, but here's a couple options that you could use. You know, I used to take on too much until I learned how to delegate. Now I'm much better at managing my time. Short, simple, to the point. Public speaking, this is a good one if 
public speaking has nothing to do with the job that you are interviewing for. If it has any part of the job, don't say that one. Um, the third one, I tend to be highly analytical, which can cause me to overthink. So I've learned to focus on the most important elements of a decision in order to make a sound but faster decision. Boom. And if you have a really good sense of humor, you might be able to pull off the very last one. You know, what is your weakness? Chocolate at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Done. But um, <laughs> pow. But that depends on your sense of humor. So I want you to come up with your answer. Again, you don't have to go on and on about it. Come up with it. Write it down somewhere. And use the same one every time you're going to go on an interview. There's no reason to ever have to rethink this one and come up with a variety. Okay? Just come up with something that works and use it. All right, question so far about the weakness question. If you have a, an answer that you're considering using, you are welcome to send me an email with what that answer is, and I will let you know what I think. You could absolutely do that. All right, we've got just a couple minutes left. The best tip overall that I can give you for interviewing is this, to practice a lot. It truly is the best tip. So give yourself, I should say if I go back, that give yourself the time to practice. Do not wait until the night before your interview and go, oh, I guess I better pull some stuff out and prepare. Right? That'd be winging it. And we know a number of us have done that and it doesn't work well. So as much time as you have from when the interview is scheduled, I would start practicing and preparing and do it a little bit every single day. Okay. Um, situational or behavioral questions. How many of you are familiar with that? Those are the questions that say, tell me about a time when. Give me an example of a time. We should all be, have experience with these. So either people are asleep or only a few of you actually get these. Um, you're going to get them. This is, how, this is what interviewers, interviews are about. You are going to get situational questions. Tell me about a time when um, you exhibited strong, um, you were a strong team player. Tell me about a time when you worked with a difficult customer and how did you handle it. Uh, can you give me an example of the most, um, the time you had to make a tough decision and how did you handle it. I mean, this is the kind of questions you're going to get, right? Tracy says, I hate these. Um, so you never are ready to answer. So you want to practice and prepare. This list is on the career development site under the interviewing section. Or again, do an internet search on behavioral questions. And just who cares what the questions are? I just practice pretty much with all of them. Because the more prepared I am, the more I have thought about examples that I can pull from, the more I am good to go when I walk into that interview. So practice. Now, there's a strategy, a formula for answering these questions. And this is going to work really good for, was it Rebecca who rambled? Um, I mean, didn't stay on task. I can't remember who the person it was. But if you're a rambler um, and you're in a, you get behavioral questions, use this formula. It's called STAR. The S stands for situation. The T stands for task. The A is for action. The R is for result. So you start out with, here was the situation or task I was working on. All that does is set the stage. It doesn't take a lot of the time. It's just a quick setting the stage. You spend most of your time talking about the action. What did you do? And you use I statements. I did this. I did this. I did this. This is not we did it. The team did it. The group did it. We're not interviewing the team or the we. They're interviewing you. So your statements are I. Here's what I did to handle this situation. Again, that's where you spend the most of your time talking. And then the result or the outcome, it's just your closure. It just wraps it up. You know, here was the outcome. Here's what happened. We were successful. I learned something. Um, I got a bad grade. I don't, you know, it doesn't have to always be a great outcome, but here was the result of the outcome. Does this make sense? Do we have questions? This will keep you on track. Because if you learn, and you have to practice it ahead of time, but if you learn to answer your questions like this, you will just boop right through it. Situation, here's what I did. Here was the result. Stop talking. It's very effective. 
All right, I'll keep checking the chat box. You also want to have questions to ask the employer in the interview. It's super, super important for you to have questions. There are sample questions, again, on the interviewing section of the career development site. Lisette says these are all items that came up. So did you do well then, Lisette, or should you have had this workshop last week so you could have done better? That's what we really want to know. <laughs> Good. Yep, you got to practice these, Tracy. We can all do them. You just have to know what the formula is and how to work through them. Dorothy says, I have a bit of trouble with this one because I'm a sub. I go to my job and I go home, not a whole lot of room. You know what, though, Dorothy? I'm going to challenge you on that, and I'm going to say you actually have a whole lot more room for examples and accomplishment statements than you're giving yourself credit for. Our answers to these questions do not necessarily have to be anything that's current. They can be things that happened a long time ago in a job. They could be something that happened in your class your classes, they could be, you know, in a virtual group project that you're working on. They don't always have to be current examples. Um, in fact, there's examples that I use from things that happened, you know, years ago or 10 years ago, but it's still relevant. It still is an example of how I handled a certain situation. So I want you to give yourself more credit when you think about the answers that you can use for these questions. So Catherine says, using I goes against my habits of talking about my work. Yes, it absolutely does, but you need to do it because it's a big thing. When I am uh, interviewing people, that's one of those things that I tune into. Are they saying we or are they saying I? And when you say I, it comes from a place of confidence, right? Here's what I did. Here's what I can do for you. It's not about we. I'm interviewing you, and I want to know specifically, Catherine, what is it you can do for me? So that is a really powerful tip for you to start practicing. I mean, if anything, tonight you walk away with that. Uh, Lisa says, I think I did pretty well. <laughs> I ramble. <laughs> well, you're learning, and you're aware of it, so that's important. Lori, uh, use these lists for the first interview. Pretty sure it helped me get a second one. Nice. Good job. All right. Good job. OK. We are running over. I think I hit everything. We've got that. Yes, we are done. So here's my email address. If you think of some other questions, absolutely feel free to email me and ask me. That's what I'm here for. Um, again, if you want me to look at a weakness question or to tell me about yourself question. If you want to type this stuff up, I'll look at it. I have no problem with that. Uh, Amanda says, is it acceptable to ask about compensation in an interview? No, 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 no. Um, it is absolutely not the time at all to bring up compensation. And if that is something that you have done or do, you probably didn't get a second interview. Um, you don't want to ever talk about compensation or money until they are sold on you. They want you. And they've offered you a job. And if part of you is wondering, well, I don't even know if I want this job because I don't know what they're going to pay, you wait it out. And if they get to the point where they offer you the job, and that means they want you, then you're in a position to negotiate, and you can try to get the salary that you actually do want. And Dorothy's saying, do you review resumes? Yes, 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 I do. Um, send it to me as an attachment. If you send it as a Word doc, I'll actually go in, and I can make revisions right on the document and send it back to you as well. Yep, you're in the driver's seat. I like it. You guys were great. Thank you for all of your questions and your interaction. Totally appreciate it. Makes, uh, makes it fun. And um, you guys are very, very welcome. Have a great evening. Thank you, Renee, my trusty technical assistant. <laughs> and uh, talk to you guys later. Have a great evening. Bye.